Hey everyone, now I'm Melanie and I'm going to teach you a few things today. But first, I'm going to ask you a question. What pairs well with pepperoni pizza? A nice burger on a hot summer day or a Montreal St. Vieter bagel? Cheese, that's right. Cheese fermentation begins with milk, a suspension of fats, proteins, lactose, and minerals in water. The milk is first heated in a process known as pasteurization. Milk is pasteurized when it reaches temperatures ranging between 62 to 72 degrees Celsius. This is done to destroy any stray bacteria that may cause harm or impact the overall taste of the cheese. This can be done by placing a 3 liter sample of whole milk over the stovetop and monitoring the temperature using a thermometer. Once the desired temperature has been attained, the milk is allowed to cool between 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. Then, a starter culture typically made up of lactic acid bacteria such as lactococci is added and stirred into the milk. Now the milk is cooled for a reason, and that reason is that starter cultures can be both mesophilic and thermophilic, the main difference being the optimal temperature at which they can grow. Thermophilic bacteria demonstrate optimal growth between 37 to 42 degrees Celsius, while mesophilic bacteria demonstrate optimal growth between 25 to 30 degrees. The starter culture ferments lactose in milk into lactic acid, decreasing the pH. The most important aspects of cheese production involve two milk proteins, whey and casein. Naturally, casein exists as negatively charged missiles, which keep them from clumping together. Kappa casein, which is found at the surface of the casein missiles, is polar and keeps the missile soluble in the milk's water phase. The core molecule is hydrophobic and guarantees the structure of missiles. The accumulation of hydrogen atoms brought on by the presence of lactic acid successfully neutralizes the polar surface of casein missiles and forces them to aggregate together, forming a coagulum. The curd made strictly using acid coagulation tends to be more fragile and has a high moisture content due to its limited ability to expel whey. An enzyme called rennet is typically added and stirred into the mixture following the starter culture in order to facilitate the expulsion of whey and form a stronger curd. Rennet contains the precursor for the enzyme chymosin, an acid protease that cleaves kappa casein on the surface of missiles to form para kappa casein. Para kappa casein precipitates in the presence of calcium ions readily available in milk and causes the missiles to aggregate in a net-like matrix. The solid mass is defined as the curd. When the curd reaches the desired texture with respect to time, the liquid portion, whey, may be drained off. If the ferment is taking place at home, this can be done using a cheesecloth. The solid curd that remains can then be pressed to form a continuous mass or salted to encourage further expulsion of whey. And there you have it, delicious, yummy cheese.